let's talk about the reflections of parent functions. On a graph, you can either reflect across the x-axis or you can reflect across the y-axis, or that's at least all I'm going to go over in my class. So you need to remember that when you reflect across the x-axis, y is changing and vice versa. If you're reflecting across the y-axis, x is changing. So you need to know these two notations. Over here with the reflection across the x-axis, I just said y is changing. f of x is the same thing as y. So in this case, I'm changing the sign of y. I'm changing it to negative f of x. Over on the right with my reflection across the y-axis, like I said, x is changing this time. So that means that x is going to change to a negative x. Before I do an example with a function, I just want you guys to look at a graph and picture what is actually changing when I do these reflections. So I just put this random point on here. It's 4 comma 4. Don't forget which axis is x and which axis is y. Now let's reflect this across the x-axis. That means I'm going to flip this point across the horizontal line, which is the x-axis, which would put it down here in quadrant four. Okay, now if you look at it, what changed about this point was its y value. Instead of being 4 comma 4 now, it's 4 comma negative 4. So this is just a demonstration of why the y is changing when we reflect across the x. So now it's the opposite when I reflect across the y-axis. If I'm going to reflect across the y-axis, I'm starting back at the original point. I end up over here in quadrant two at the point negative four, positive four. Now again, y did not change, this time x changed, which is why it's always the opposite that's changing. So reflection across y, x is changing, reflecting across x, y is changing. So here's an example using my quadratic parent function. I'm going to reflect it across the x-axis, and then I will also reflect it across the y-axis. So again, a reflection across the x-axis means y is changing. f of x is y. So instead of f of x, I would have negative f of x. Now that just means that I'm going to put a negative in front of my function f of x. So instead of having x squared, I now have negative x squared. Very simple, that's all I needed to do there. Now to move on to the reflection across the y-axis, this is going to look similar in my final answers, but they are very, very different. So reflection across y means x is changing. This notation that I just wrote means that every single x in my original function f is going to be replaced with negative x. So everywhere that I just underlined is actually going to become negative x now. When you plug something in, you must keep it in parentheses. So when I replace these x's with negative x, The reflection across the y-axis is not the same equation as the reflection across the x-axis. Having the negative inside of the parentheses means that the exponent has an effect on that negative sign. With the reflection across the x-axis, the first one that I did, the negative sign is not inside of the parentheses. So the exponent has absolutely nothing to do with that negative. So these are very different equations. As you can see from the graphs, 
the reflection across the x-axis started with the red parabola facing up. Once you reflected the equation, it's now facing down. Now a reflection across the y-axis actually doesn't look like anything happened because the parabola is already symmetric on either side of the y-axis. So if you look hard enough, there is a black parabola and a red dashed parabola on top of each other because they do look the same. That is because the exponent, I'm talking about the reflection across the y-axis, the exponent has an effect on the negative sign. If you were to simplify this, a negative squared means negative times negative. Well, negative times negative is positive, which means this just simplifies back to itself. 